That's five. That is five straight losses. Let's talk about it all today on Locked on Tigers. You are Locked on Tigers, your daily Detroit Tigers podcast. Part of the Locked on Podcast Network, your team every day. What is up, everybody? Welcome back to another edition of Locked On Tigers. I'm, of course, your host, Scott Bentley. Today is Friday, March, May, rather, 24th, 2024. Thank you so much for making Locked On Tigers your first listen. Every single day, we are free and available wherever you get your podcasts, including YouTube, part of the Locked On Podcast Network, your team every day. Today's episode is brought to you by FanDuel. Make every moment more right now. New customers can get $150 in bonus bets with any winning $5 bet. That's $150 with any winning $5 bet. Visit FanDuel.com slash locked on to get started. And the Detroit Tigers are really not getting started. That was a really smooth transition there. Tigers lose 9-1 to one at the hands of the Toronto Blue Jays. That is now five consecutive losses for your Detroit Tigers. Um, brutal. Brutal. Nothing is going well. Um, you know, th- this is, this is a, a really, really brutal stretch, I guess, to put it lightly but again they've been bad the entire month of may with this loss they fall to 23 and 27 they are 10 games back from the cleveland guardians in first place like i said they're on a five game losing streak while the guardians and royals at the time of this recording at least are both on a six game winning streak so that's fun so The reason I I bring up 10 games back, I do find it interesting that the Tigers in the standings are actually closer to the White Sox than the Guardians. You can't really, that's not like an exact science, right? It's not like, oh, like, like at your, you know, you're eight games away from the Sox, you're 10 games away from the Guardians. That's like an exact, you know, like property. That's not really how it works. I understand that. Um, it doesn't make me any less sad that it's true, you know? Brutal. I think the, wow, I was going to say I think the worst part of this is, um, but I feel like I've said that about pretty much every single aspect of the last week. The last time we won a game was last Saturday. It's Friday. Um, and, and And most of the month to be honest. So I'm, I'm not going to use that phrase. But one of the noteworthy uh, things in, in this losing streak, one of the, the, uh, the notable things that really jumps out at you is that outside of game three against the Diamondbacks, none of these are even close games, final score wise. They all were at one point, which is kind of the frustrating part, except for that one game to Kansas City where it was like 6 nothing after the second inning. Like, most of them were... Heck, I mean, tonight, last night as you're listening to this, Thursday, the game was 1-1 to through 6. Right? Tie game, two-thirds of the way through. It was a two-run game through 7. It was 3-1 to through 7 innings. Or through six innings, whatever. Nine to one. Three to eight, three to ten, three to eight, one to nine. And then you had four to six against Arizona. Not even, not even, not even close final score wise at least and that's been kind of a point of controversy too AJ Hinch what was that Tuesday maybe it was Wednesday pushed back after I uh, I don't actually don't know who the reporter was so my apologies I don't, I don't know who asked the question but uh one of the reporters had used the word competitive and said the you know 
another uncompetitive game. And AJ pushed back and said he thinks they are competitive. And uh, he was asked to expand upon that point on Thursday. And he basically said that final score is obviously not competitive. If you just look at the final score, then yes, obviously uncompetitive games in that sense. They're not close games at the end of the day. But he thinks that the team is is grinding and playing hard, and that's what he considered competitive. Um, I sure, man. I I guess to me. I would really hope that everybody out there is really trying. That's like that's like the bare minimum. Like I'm not throwing a parade because you try at your job. <laughs> that's what that's what we brought you in to do, right? That's what the organization rather brought you in to do was was to try. So I I'm I'm not I'm uh, great. That that's great that they're they're trying. They're getting smacked. Something needs to be addressed and something needs to happen, man. And I'm not asking for, you know, trade the whole roster tomorrow. Okay. I'm not that naive. I understand how the game of baseball works. I, I, at least I like to pretend that I do. I, I understand that it's, it's May. Right. Like they're not going to go and just go on like a trading spree tomorrow. It's it's May. I understand how the season and the schedule works and everything, et cetera, et cetera. But any sign of life and any sign that would show the public that there is not just complacency for this garbage would be very reassuring. And I also understand that that is the fan within me. That is not me using, you know, like logic and reasoning. That's just pure fandom. Like somebody prove that this season matters to someone. <laughs> I, I I understand that it is that is complete, just pure fandom, and it's it's maybe illogical even. I I agree. But this is a disaster. You are one of the worst teams in all of baseball in the month of May. And you have been for the entire month of May. It's not like you're you're skidding in the last week. You haven't won a game in a week. But like you you got off to a brutal start to this month and just haven't recovered. This isn't just like, oh, well, you know, in the it's just the, a rough five game stretch. We're two months into the season, and in one of them, you've been awful. And it's the one we're in. <laughs> so you can't recency bias your way I into, you know, convincing yourself that it it's anything but. I've been asked at nauseam about the coaching staff. Let, let's talk about that a little bit, okay? We're going to talk about this ball game. There are, you know, Jack Flaherty was great. We'll, we'll, we'll continue all of this conversation right after this. Got to talk to you all today about our friends over at Ibotta. Look, Ibotta is simply the best. Spring has sprung, and that means spring cleaning, whether that means stocking up on cleaning supplies or swapping out your winter clothes. For new spring clothes, make sure you're using Ibotta and get real cash back with every purchase. Ibotta is a free app that gives you the most cash back every time you shop on hundreds of items from groceries to beauty supplies to toys, etc., so you can make sure you're beating inflation no matter what you're purchasing. The average Ibotta user earns $256 per year. That could cover the cost of an entire shopping trip, that flight you've been eyeing, or a fancy dinner 
that you have been craving. Other apps give you points that at the end of the day really don't amount to anything. Uh, and with Ibotta, you can add your offers in the app, upload your receipt, and get real cash that you can cash out to your bank account, PayPal, gift cards, etc. So join over 50 million users and earn cash back every time you shop for over 2,700 brands and real retailers. Right now, Ibotta is offering our listeners $5 just for trying Ibotta and using the code LOCKEDONMLB when you register. Just go to the App Store or Google Play and download the free Ibotta app and start earning cash back and use code LOCKEDONMLB. That's I-B-O-T-T-A in the Google Play or App Store and use code LOCKEDONMLB. I'm also going to talk to you all about our friends over at Supply House. Get supplies from the site that's made for skilled trades, supplyhouse.com. Supplyhouse.com is the reliable way to order plumbing, HVAC, and electrical products online. Their easy-to-use website is packed with helpful resources and the latest product info to help you get the job done right. Shop a complete inventory of over 200,000 parts from over 400 top brands and get your order delivered right to your door with fast shipping from coast to coast. Need help with an order? Well, get expert support and industry-leading service from the friendliest folks in the business and talk to a real person every time. Pros in the skilled trades game can get a competitive edge by joining SupplyHouse.com's free Trade Master program. Every Trade Master gets access to a dedicated phone line, free shipping, and discounts on every order. So join the thousands of trade pros already benefiting from their free membership at SupplyHouse.com slash TM and order public, like I said, plumbing, HVAC, electrical supplies from anywhere with just a few clicks at supplyhouse.com. All right, everybody, welcome back here. Segment two of Locked on Tigers. Appreciate y'all for tuning in. As always, making us your first listen every day. Shout out to the everydayers that do tune in every day, even amidst a five-game losing streak. Also, be sure to check out Locked On Sports today, the free 24-7 streaming channel on YouTube, giving you the best stories from around the sports world. You can subscribe to for free on YouTube or for free in the Amazon Fire TV channels app. Detroit Tigers lose another ball game. Like I said before the break, I have been asked a boatload. And everybody loves when I say boatload about the coaching staff. And I, I look, th- this might be really lazy analysis. Okay. And I will openly admit it if, if that you believe that that's the case, sure. But like there, there isn't a, a singular scapegoat here. Th- this is, this is a, a, a train wreck. This is, like I said last week, this is a group effort, right? People want to blame Hinch. Uh, I mean, sure, what he's doing clearly isn't working, right? But he's rearranging chairs on the Titanic. This is the talent he was given. And, And the hitting coaches... Right? We talked about them. It's probably been a couple of weeks since we've brought up the hitting coaches, I guess, in hindsight. Keith Beauregard, Michael Berdar, Lance Zawadski is, is an assistant. Like, yeah, g- go ahead. We, I mean, we canned all of our hitting coaches after the 2022 season. Has that led us to greener pastures? Not really. You had a good two months last season. <laughs> if you look at it from that perspective, I, I mean, sure, we can just keep the, the carousel going, right? We can, and, and like, I'm not against it. I'm, I'm not saying that's wrong to feel that way either. I'm not saying that's like a, a, a dumb opinion. Like, sure, I go through the carousel. We can just keep bringing in hitting coaches and if we don't hit for you know two months then then we like we can just keep doing that but at some point it's the talent they're given as well and and again I'm not trying to steer you one way or another everybody can get it man this is this is brutal your offense is a train wreck 
And yes, I, I mean, if you look at the, the, the offensive numbers from the team in the month of May, they're not like the most catastrophic thing you've ever seen. Well, that's because they randomly four times scored like 12 runs. You take away those games, it's dreadful. Right? Remove the outliers. I wasn't a very good student. That, that is something that was taught in math, though. The outliers aren't the getting shut out and scoring three or fewer. The outliers are the 12 run games. So yes, the approach I've talked about at nauseum. We've been talking about it the entire month of May. Yes, I, I, I disagree. With, with a lot of the approaches, the approaches in this game didn't seem existent. I don't even know what we're talking about. We're talking about, oh, well, you know, we, we, the approach and, and, you know, it wasn't executed very well. I don't even know what anyone was trying to accomplish up there. And Kevin Gosman is a darn good pitcher, man. I, the ERA is high. He's had three really bad starts. The rest are all normal Kevin Gosman. He is, he is nasty. But golly. So yeah, you, you know, like you, you are, are you mad at the the hitting coaches? Sure. Are you mad at AJ? Sure. Are you mad at all the players? Sure. You mad at Scott Harris? Sure. You're right. You're right. And and I'm not saying that to to not put the blame on anyone specific. I genuinely am trying to just articulate that this is a group effort. If we had the best hitting coaches on the planet right now, we, we wouldn't be tied for first in the AL Central. Right? If you gave me the best hitting coach on the planet and sent me up to the batter's box, I'm still striking out on three pitches. And these guys have more talent in their right toe than I have ever had on a baseball field in my entire life. I'm not comparing myself to a major league baseball player certainly okay for as frustrated as we're talking this is the top one percent of baseball players on the planet but it's everybody that's all i'm trying to paint jack flaherty was really good he doesn't get rewarded um was really good. His slider is something nice. I know we talked a lot about the fastball going into the season, and, and you know, rightfully so. That's uh, a pitch that's very important for him, and the fastball has has been a lot better this season. Um, but but man, his slider is, is really an incredible pitch, and uh, we didn't even have like you know like metrics or anything in this ball game. We'll talk about that in a second. But um, this was like every start you watch from him, you, you can tell fastball slider is going to do a lot of damage. He he is really becoming, I mean, legitimately, he has been one of the best strikeout and swing and swing and miss pitchers in the entire sport so far this season. And that's great. That is great. We want to find something to be positive about. Jack Flaherty's been really, really good in this pitching coaching staff, not the hitting coaching staff, obviously, but the pitching coaching staff continues to be a place that is going to attract people in the future, which is really exciting. I'm going to keep telling myself that at least that it's really exciting. I'm going to, I'm whether it's a lie or not, I'm going to keep telling myself that's exciting. Okay. Let's keep all rolling here. Got a few more things I want to talk about, and then we will let you on with your weekend. Hopefully the Tigers cannot just get completely embarrassed in all three of these games against the Jays this weekend. All right, we'll do that right after this. Got to talk to you all today about our friends over at FanDuel. 
It's winner take all time, baby. In the NBA and NHL, and FanDuel's giving you a shot to bring home a big win of your own. I actually got to finish this up so I can go watch overtime of the Oilers Stars game right now. New customers get one hundred and fifty dollars in bonus bets with any winning five dollar bet. That's one hundred and fifty bucks to bet on spreads, money lines, player props, and so much more. Visit FanDuel.com/slash locked on and make every playoff shot count. FanDuel, America's number one sports book. All right, everybody, welcome back here. Third and final segment, Locked On Tigers. I appreciate you all greatly for tuning in. Like I said, even while the team is struggling mightily. Uh, one of the things that is, you know, we I, I've been harping on the offense all season, and, and I am going to continue standing on that. I, it's not good. Uh, however, the reason why these games have looked as ugly as they have this week is because the one thing that was your strong suit is crumbling, and you don't have the offensive ability to afford your pitching having bad days. And that is. Like, the crazy thing is when we're having that conversation and we're frustrated and we're like, oh, like, you know, the pitching can't afford to have a bad day. The front office openly admitted that that's how they built the team. There, the, you can go find the, the Scott Harris interview where he's standing at the spring training complex. That's like open info. That's just like wide out for everybody. Anybody can go watch. You can watch it right now. I'm sure the video is still out there openly just like yeah well you know we added pitchers instead of hitters to our bad offense because we knew that it was going to be inconsistent and we wanted to be able to keep games close well what happens if the pitching isn't good enough you're hosed and you knew it so we um the bullpen obviously again jack flaherty was fantastic the bullpen is, is what i'm referring to in this uh this this i don't know me complaining um the bullpen has not been good and that's a problem that we started talking about earlier this week um we we talked about Foley and how you know it's really hard to have a really good bullpen when you don't have a clear highest leverage reliever and they are now at a point where they they literally don't have one that there there isn't a guy that I think anybody in this fan base trusts in the highest leverage moments in a ball game. And everyone else is, is is struggling. Will Vest has been sliding. He actually his most recent outing I thought was pretty good, but before that had been sliding. Alex Fido got pops today. Mason Ingler got called up for Alex Lang. We'll talk about that in a second. He got popped, gave up a home run like he did so much last year. Joey Wentz, struggling. Jason Foley, struggling. Andrew Chafin, struggling. Shelby Miller, before getting hurt, struggling. You are in deep stuff, dog. Like, I... I I'm really trying, and I've said this before, I, I really try so hard, so hard, because I, I'm a very uh, emotional person. I try so unbelievably hard not to get too high with the high and low with the lows. I, I really do. It is in the back of my head all the time, all right? I promise you. It, it is a, a large part of my thought process for how I prepare and attack this job on a daily basis. It, it really is. Right now, I understand it's just a five-game losing streak. But like I said earlier, you can expand that to the entire month of May. We're two months in. One of them's really bad. The offense hasn't been good for either. We haven't even seen a good offensive stretch. We've seen random. Oh, there's a 12 run outing for no reason. There's a 12 and an eight for two consecutive games, and then we lose the next five and can't score more than four runs in any of them. The, I don't know. My my point being, I don't know how you watch this team up to this point, and you don't have just blaring sirens going off in regards to this offense. I understand the bullpen's imploding. I understand that the 
the, uh, we've had a few starters have some rough outings this week. I get all of that. None of that matters, right? Proven by the beginning of May. None of that matters. They're just going to lose a bunch of one-run games, even if those groups do figure it out and straighten it out and get back to where they were in, in you know April and early May. AJ Hinch has had a heck of a week. I, I really do think that the losing is weighing on him, which I know some people probably welcome. Uh, just the fact that he's been really angry this week. He has had uh, he, he's been angry answering some questions with the media, um, as we talked about earlier in the episode. He went out. There's a video. Chris Brown of Motor City Metrics tweeted it out, posted it, whatever it's called now, whatever that app is. <laughs> <laughs> these days excuse me um you can go watch aj walk out of the dugout go to the mound rip alex lang a new one turn around go back into the dugout and then they optioned him after the game alex lang is in toledo dog for mason englert who had a five and a half era last year and just did not have a major league fastball. He goes out, gives up three runs, and gives up a home run like he seemed to do every outing last year. And, and Mason Englert's story I, I resonate with and, and the person, fantastic. On the field last year, objectively, was well below major league average. And so to get demoted Alex Lang... Um, and, and Englert's had, he's got like a 2-3 ERA in Toledo this year. Like he, he's had a good season in the mud ends. They asked him about it. He said he thought he deserved the, the promotion. That's all great. I, I hope he has a zero ERA the rest of his you know life. For Alex Lang to get demoted, I, you know, AJ said it wasn't because of that. I, like, I, I believe him that that in a vacuum was not the reason why. I also think that part of the reason he was pissed is because Alex Lang can't throw a freaking strike. Alex Lang last year, the, the strike throwing was a huge problem. His walk rate has gone up over 3% so far this season from last year when he was in the first percentile in walk rate. He was in the bottom 1% in baseball in the amount of people he walked, and his walk rate has gone up. So I, I, I don't think that, you know, the, the temper tantrum he threw where he threw the ball against the netting or like AJ chewing him out in a vacuum is why, but I think that it's all because Alex Lang can't throw a freaking strike. So he's demoted. Mason Englert's up. I can't. Uh, Mason Englert's just going to be a low leverage, long reliever, as proven today. So, like, it's not going to have too much of an effect on on too terribly much. I don't really think. And then Vladdy shushes AJ Hinch. AJ Hinch gets pissed and fall like walks and stares down Vlad in the dugout after he hits the home run against Englert. Ah. Uh, I really think AJ is furious about how this month has gone. And I know that one of the big knocks on AJ is, uh, well, there's been a lot lately, but I think one of the bigger ones that's been consistent throughout his Tigers tenure is a lack of emotion sometimes on the field. I, I It is year four in the offense that he has been given this year is, is – does not look significantly better than year one for him. And I think he's fed up about it. Hopefully that leads to some sort of change. And, and I understand. I, I understand how baseball works, right? Well, I like to pretend that I do. I understand how the season goes, right? I, I, I know that they're not going to go out and make a flurry of trades on May 24th. That that has never happened and is not going to happen, right? They're not going to trade the whole team away tomorrow. Um, but something has to happen. You have to show that 
again, like I said earlier, you have to show that this isn't okay. Like you have to show some lack of complacency. I, we just want some answers. Genuinely, we just want answers, right? I don't think anyone went into this season and was expecting to hoist the World Series trophy, but I, I would love to know what is the plan going forward? What are we actively doing to fix this? Why are there not names that have been in Toledo for a while that are not going to get a look? Why are we just doing what from the outside, again, not the inside, but from the outside appears to be absolutely nothing. Alex Lang got sent down. That's great, man. That's awesome. That's that's so great. I, I don't even disagree with it, right? If you can't throw strikes, you can't throw strikes. Go send him to Toledo to figure it out. Mason Ingler could be prime Mariana Rivera. He could be... 49 for 49, Jose Valverde, which Mariano Rivera never did, by the way. Don't let anyone forget it. He could be the greatest reliever of all time. We can't score runs. We, we can't actually score. We can't hit. Spencer Torgelson swung and hit the ball right down the middle again. Riley Green has like a 750 OPS and has been dreadful in the month of May. His at-bats tonight were, were nauseating. The only time we had offense in this ball game was when Javi Baez broke up a no-hitter. Carson Kelly got another single. Riley Green strikes out. Matt Veerling doesn't do anything. And then Winsiel Perez, the guy who's been in the majors for a month, gets a two-out single. That's the extent of the offense we put up. Cool. I don't know if I have anything else. Oh, the broadcast. Hilarious. Honestly, made it so much more enjoyable to watch the game. Um, I'm going to be honest with you. Like, I, Clearly, I'm very frustrated right now. I'm frustrated because of where we're at in the season. While I was watching this game, I was actually laughing a good majority of it. They, they, were, they were broadcasting the game through cup and, and string, you know, telephones that you used to make when you were in kindergarten. Um, they, they, we didn't even have, vi uh, um, not audio, visual. We didn't even have video for the first several innings. Uh, we, we had no like score ticker at the bottom. Um, it, it was a, a train wreck, honestly. Power went out in the Bally trucks, apparently. So... This was honestly the funniest game of the year. We got no hit. It, it was it, it was a, an absolute train wreck. In the whole game was broadcasted on like a camcorder from 2005 and, and a potato. And that honestly gave me some like comedic stress relief of getting no hit through six and then losing by eight. I I genuinely enjoyed. How much of a train wreck it was. Okay. I think that's all I got. I, I really do. <clears throat> I, uh, yeah, I, I appreciate you all for, for tuning in as always. Um, if you, uh, if you see a Tigers fan this weekend, another one besides yourself, obviously give them a hug. Um, please win. I, uh, you want me to do a preview? Win, just win a ball game, win ever, score any amount of runs at any point. 
Okay, I'm, I'm just stalling at this point. I'm going to go to bed. Thanks for making Locked on Tigers your first listen every single day. Shout out to the everydayers that do tune in every day. We will be back on Monday. Hopefully recapping a weekend set in which the Tigers won any baseball games would be nice. Maybe some change. Maybe a call up or send down. Maybe uh, uh, a change in approach. Maybe uh, you name it. Like I said earlier, man, like people are are like, oh, like, you know, when are we going to bring up like so-and-so? When is it, like, you know, like it's it's everybody, man. The, the, the players have not been performing. There, there's a lack of talent on the roster. The coaching staff is not putting them in positions to win. And, and all three facets, starting pitching, bullpen, and offense, have been brutal. Try to right the ship. I love you all, man. I really do. Thank you so much for uh, for tuning in, and we'll be back on Monday. All right? Peace and love. Going to Therapy's Dope. Have a great weekend. Do not let this baseball team ruin your weekend. It's going to be a beautiful, beautiful, beautiful weather. Go, go enjoy yourself. All right? Peace and love. Going to Therapy's Dope. I'll catch you on Monday, baby. Go Tigers. If I can find the video. Go Tigers.